Go ahead. Okay, today we're take, changing the belt on a 580K tractor. The belt goes between the hydraulic pump and the engine, which means you've got a whole bunch of removing to do. I'm going to show you what I've done to get to it and how to change it. First things first, these are the original bolts that hold this counterweight on. I've replaced them with a bolt just like this. So we now have four bolts extra long and I slid the bolt, the counterweight out so we have access to the pump. The counterweight did tend to settle making it difficult to pull the bolts out. So I used the floor jack to simply lift the counterweight up to get the weight off the bolts so I can slide it forward. The next step is to take the hood off. Take the hood off, you got bolt holes two here and two there. You remove those bolts and this, there's spring activated. What, two people will lift it off and then you'll have access to more of the motor. The hood's off, now we need to take off this protective covering down on the bottom to get full access to the pump. Okay, now that we have the hood removed, the flanging that was in the front removed, and the counterweight pulled forward, you can see the hydraulic pump. The way to pull the pump out is you have two hydraulic lines here, a large one and a small one that need to be disconnected, and a hose right here that connects up to a coarse filter that goes to the hydraulic fluid storage. Once these are all disconnected, there's two bolts and two nuts in the back that will be loosened and will slide the pump forward and out if you want it. Now, you're probably thinking, how are you going to pull this out when things full of hydraulic fluid? Well, you're going to drain the hydraulic fluid first. So, the case has approximately 25 gallons of hydraulic fluid, so you better have some buckets handy. I'm a little bit lazy and I also don't like to get dirty. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up the fill line and I have a pump that's normally used for things like diesel fuel, which it's not being used for now, and I've modified it with a hose that will fit down inside and I'm going to pump this reservoir dry. The reservoir by itself takes about 15 gallons, and I'm going to put it in this 15 gallon tote. If we drained all of the, fuel, the hydraulic lines and the hydraulic rams, you'd use about 25 gallons. And since everything's going to stay stable, we're not going to do anything else. So that's what we're going to do. We're now going to empty the reservoir of all hydraulic fluid. Once we get it done with this, there's a very large drain plug in the bottom and we're going to drain it just to get any last bits that the hose can't get. So we have to drain the hydraulic fluid. If you don't have something like this, you're going to need at least three five gallon buckets and you're going to have to swap them real fast underneath there because that inch and a half, two inch hole coarse hydraulic fluid really fast. And of course I assume your tractor has been sitting for a while so the hydraulic fluid is cool, it's not hot. Okay, well the idea of pumping the oil out from the top didn't work. Um, apparently there's just like a small hole or something in the frame and we could not get the hose down that hole. So we had to drain it out the bottom and as you can see we got a bath in hydraulic fluid. Yay! At any rate the hydraulic fluid is now drained. Now if you come over here, what we've done so far is using an inch and a half wrench and a one inch wrench we remove the two hydraulic outs and using just a screwdriver on these uh, radiator clips we have loosened these two hoses this pump is now disconnected hydraulically the only thing that's holding it to the tractor there are two three-quarter inch bolts on the top and I believe they're three quarter inch nuts on the bottom. We're going to take the nuts off and there'll be the studs sticking out. We'll then remove the two top three quarter inch bolts and the entire hydraulic pump should slide out of the tractor with a little luck, exposing 
the pulley, which will allow us to put on a new fan belt. Okay, so we now have the pump pulled out. What we had to do was, after we drained all the hydraulic fluid, we disconnected the two one inch and inch and a half lines, and then the rubber hose on the inside. There are two bolts on the top. We pulled those out, and there are two studs on the bottom bolted into the block. In our particular situation, the studs acted as bolts, and we had to whack them out real slowly. Um, I'm guessing it's because the way the studs are, they're just running thread, and when you put the pump in, you drag the pump over the threads, and the threads get boogered, and that's why the nuts grabbed and actually backed out. We're going to have to clean up these bolts, or nuts, I should say, and the running thread before we put it back in. Maybe we'll use the pads that are locked tight. Something else you need to watch for is pump wear on the shaft. If you take a look at this shaft here, you can see that, come on in close, you can see right here, it's a little bit worn on the edges here versus on the very inside, it's much, much, there's more meat on it. Well, that's because this hydraulic pump has been used. If this is worn down to the point that it's almost gone, you gotta change the pump. Um, I've tried rebuilding these pumps. It doesn't work. It's a lot easier getting on eBay and ordering one for seven, eight hundred dollars, and you got it, and it works. Uh, this one came off of eBay. Um, the other thing to watch for is that this pump plugs into this shaft down here, and this is how come we had to pull the pump out. The pulley, the, here is the pulley right here. You can see I got it. This is the old pulley, and it goes on right underneath it. But because the hydraulic pump fits right into there, you got to. If the shaft is worn on the pump, you'll also want to replace this guy. There's only four bolts that hold it on. He kind of wobbles around in there. And this guy here feels like he's got a lot of meat on him. This guy has a little bit of worn out. I'm just going to let it ride. Um, I don't use the tractor that much that I need to change it. However, here's the brand new belt. And this is the problem why well, you have to take the hydraulic pump off. Now the belt goes down and underneath the belt is now installed. That's how it goes. So that's why we have to pull the pump out. Now everything gets reversed. You can see here we put the two studs back in, um, ready to put the pump in. We'll make sure on the shaft you put some um, lubricant on it. Um, um, we'll be using um, some non seas um, lubricant and that way it'll help it come out the next time a lot lot easier um, so now we're going to reverse the process put everything together although this video is less than 10 minutes we're four hours into this job <laughs> if you want to know how long it's going to take um, I'm gonna guess it's probably another four hours before we're going to be done and again we're taking our time but uh, and we had a big mess underneath the tractor to clean up so anyway there you go. That's how you change a hydraulic or a fan belt on 580K by removing the pump. Uh, thank you.